welcome to the round one team review or possibly season review who knows um i still think we'll play the afl wants to play in um the afl said we have the whole year to play so we could start july august or something like that um but yeah we get on to the super coach team and despite my poor rank uh i think the team's in pretty good nick it's just we captained josh dunkley who scored 60 odd and everyone else's captain scored 180 so uh obviously it was a pretty shattered on friday night but um i only have one person to blame and that's josh dunkley not me obviously um just because the grundy had a poor round one record so we scored 2072 um just a heap of, a lot to discuss of what's going on this year um in just in terms of super coach with the shortened games i'll get into that in a sec um so yeah, we'll get into the team, but before that, um, feel free to join our Discord community. Um, we have lately we've been playing Scribble together. It's a really, uh, really nice community to, to be a part of. Have lots of fun, and um, I think we're going to be playing Pokemon Showdown or something uh, in the meantime. So a lot of people have to stay home and stuff. So it is what it is, but uh, fun and um, yes. Yeah. So we'll get into the team and start off in the defense. And Laird, Sicily, Houston, I think they're all going to be fine. Um, Laird was fine. Sicily's kicking was horrific. I think it was 50, 58% disposal. And um, Dan Houston, uh, a little disappointing. Just all the other port mids did better than him. But um, his stat line, you know, he scored 80 Dream Team and... 79 super coach whereas pretty much everyone else had about plus 20 plus 30 some more on their dream team super coach uh, ratio so happy with houston that's fine sam doc the king is back uh, so it looks like and 89 percent time on ground i don't think he'd be getting that um if he was playing a full proper game but that's what it is right now so uh very happy with doherty and feel a bit silly for doubting him um but yeah fantastic Fantastic player, Sam Dockery. And then Noble, Zerk Thatcher. Noble looked good. I thought he's underscored. And uh, Zerk Thatcher, um, fully expecting him to score anywhere between 40 and 100 every week. Um, probably 60 average, maybe. So then the bench. This is all we got. I I'm really surprised to see the amount of people running donuts on the bench. I think it's a terrible move. Um, but now it probably doesn't matter. So uh, Stasevich. 28 didn't see the game but uh, really poor um and jared brander i uh, didn't see the game either so um 59 that's fine that's what you want from your bench so i think this was the correct structure i'm really happy with the team structure i think it's um I th in terms of the defenders uh, we didn't really have any other base base rookies on in defense so going for primos and avoiding robertin i had robertin a few days ago um just got a bit of cold feet about him um but uh, really surprised at how poorly he did he should not be scoring like that but yeah this structure i think is fine uh, given the rookies available so happy with the defense and um pending uh whatever amount of trades we get for next time i think we're just going to leave it now the midfield so this was a complete disaster paying up I th not so much all of them but the running three dogs mids um there were reasons for that but we'll get into that in a sec mccray 103 the king fine locky nil unbelievable um thought he was overpriced until i saw him in the marsh series and just thought oh my goodness i have to get locky nil now so he was probably the most untouchable mid as so i got something in my eye um patrick cripps i thought he's you're looking at his stat line it looked so much better than a 112 so really disappointing he was my vice captain um and then we have my captain josh dunkley unbelievable um honestly he's so much better than that but uh the dogs first collingwood game uh, grundy controlled that game the dogs mids couldn't really get near it um, but dunkley 67 that's his worst score in pff, since he's played forward so he's never scored that badly. It just happens to be the week I captain him. Um, but, you know, a good reminder that if Grundy is available for vice-captain, if he's playing on a Friday or Saturday, you vice-captain Grundy every time. I suppose captain as well, but it's a, 
it's a no-risk play, vice-captain in Grundy, so really stupid. Um, we really wish Cripps was scored as I thought he was, so I didn't fall into this um, Dunkley captain, but yeah, really stupid mistake. And then Bont, I think Bont just tried to do too much. He won the Brownlow two weeks ago, it seemed, so um, disappointing, but he will bounce back for sure. And then the rookies, Rao was fine. Uh, Tom Green, h- how he gets a game ahead of Haitley, who's a, at a year of development and was better than Green in the Mar series, I'm not sure. Haitley's done something to Leon Cameron. Um, but yeah, maybe he holds his spot, I don't know. And uh, Marlon Pickett, fantastic, has the role and um, started slow but picked up a bit. So uh, yeah, we can hold him for as long as we can. And then the bench, again, this this is all we had for the bench. So I've never had a year, I can't remember a year where our defense, our, our benches have been so thin. So obviously I had to run Buterick, uh, Butterick at M11. Otherwise I would have had him as on the forward bench. But yeah, Tyler Brown looked good. McInerney looked pretty good. Um, probably has Gould's spot. Um, so yeah, so in terms of the midfield, I think it's fine. Going Bont was a mistake. I'm not sure Dunkley was a mistake. Um, well, it looks like it now, but his break-even is like 200. Picking all the dogsmiths, um, I don't know. I think what will happen, actually I'll speak about my trades soon, I think one of them has to go. And that, that all depends on the trades available that we have. Now, in the rucks, this was probably as good as you can possibly get this week. So we had Grundy, our go-to captain. Uh, for everyone except for me um, but in the future obviously we'll captain him forever vice captain him and then Naismith so Naismith is, he can actually ruck he's actually a good ruck but again if you didn't pick Naismith you're probably thinking it's a durability issue so um, no point in celebrating this pick now because he's a huge durability risk but he looked really good and he's had a pretty good preseason so um, not expecting 120 but you know, this cash team to be made at R2. And the fact that Gordon didn't turn up out after pretty much every other ruck did is... I don't know. This, I don't know what's going on this year, but... Um, yeah, I think... I don't know if you... Because Gorn's about to drop a lot of money. Do you... If you have, like, a free trade, do you go Gorn to Jacobs or Naismith? I actually would do that. Uh, would do that. But Gorn will go back to his 130s. But there's money to be a lot of money to be made now at R2, so um, cross that bridge when it comes. But very happy with the Naismith pick. Really low ownership and got a lot of copped it a fair bit for this pick. So, um, but again, it's a durability thing. So um, if he survives eight rounds, it's a win. And then Combin on the bench again. I'm seeing a lot of people. I think I've seen a few people that had the captaincy on Dev Robertson. Uh, Dev Robertson. And you paid for it, so I try and preach as much as I can. Just pick a proper loophole in your R three, and that's that's all you need. So um, hopefully that didn't happen to you. Now to the forward line. So obviously no Whitfield was a bit nervous, um, but we did okay without Whitfield, although he scored well. Dustin Martin. I think this rules were kind of made for Dustin Martin, um, the shorter game time, and these he actually played a bit of defense, a bit of defense. So that was. Um, interesting and yeah he looked pretty um, he looked like he was trying in the preseason and that actually is what sold me maybe he doesn't want this narrative of I don't play defense anymore so that's fine John Segler I think a lot of people would have brought him in on Sunday purely because of the way Rux was scoring so very happy with the Segler pick and um, I think in the fourth quarter he was uh, Steph Martin went down maybe the third quarter um, so that helped his score but he was beating Martin in terms of hitouts. He just couldn't get a few to advantage. So really happy with the Segler pick and provides nice cover for the whole year. So hopefully he stays fit for the year and Clarko uh, doesn't move too many magnets around. But yeah, happy. You know, I had to back myself in with this pick because it was pretty risky. And so far it looks okay. Now Tom Lynch, pff, why did I do this? Um, obviously we know... Um, yeah, yeah, zero goals, zero marks, but key forwards very up and down. So I just don't know if if, if we have a free trade, I'm going to get rid of him, to be honest. If we don't, I 
think I hold. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, Tom Lynch. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure in this environment of super coach scoring. I don't know if he's going to score much. I just don't know. So I don't. I think Hawkins did good. My check did all right. Apart from that, none of the other key forwards really did that well. I can't remember. Or oh, Sam Sturt. If he's a key forward or third tall, whatever he is, pretty well. Don't have him. He needs to come in. But yeah, I don't know. Really disappointing, but he's cheap. And that was that will be his worst game ever, I reckon. Zero marks, zero um, goals. Uh, Dev Smith. Um, yeah, this. I think the rules help him. Definitely the shorter games help him. Because he's a bit of a... I think it feels like a burst player. So just, yeah, goes hard at the contest and um, tackles heaps. Uh, yeah, Dev Smith, probably a top, easy top six mid, I reckon. So judging, he uh, yeah, just passes the eye test a lot. And then the rookies, um, Curtis Taylor, I was ready to trade him at half time when he was on, I think it was four or one, something like that. And then had a 75 point second half, which is ridiculous. So um, we can field him now, so that's fine. And then the rookies, wasn't expecting much from them, but... Um, yeah, I flipped between Sturt and Davis in the last second and went for Davis. Uh, unfortunately, that looks like the wrong move. So if we get a free trade, I think we'll get rid of Kavara or King. The only reason with Kavara, I think obviously it wasn't his... Uh, the dogs couldn't get it inside 50. But he plays um, Carlton next game. Well, so we think anyway. So... But also, Toby McLean should really play ahead of Kavara, so that's another issue. And then Max King, he's not going to score much. I'm not sure we want a slow burn um, in Supercoach 2020. So that's the team. I actually, I'm actually really happy with it. I'm just really annoyed that I have Tom Lynch and then uh, going three dogs mids. Another thing with the dogs mids, their time on ground, all around 80%. Everyone else... You know, 5.95%. Uh, all the Giants mids above 90%. Crips 92%, I think. No, the Dogs mids are 80%. So that, that's frustrating. I, I don't understand that. And I don't know. can't explain that. But they should be on the ground more, absolutely. So as annoyed... Yeah, and finally, the thing I'm most annoyed about is not picking Bailey Smith. Because he looks good and... He plays hard every game. And yeah, for him to get up 22 games with no preseason last season was unbelievable. I will bring in Bailey Smith if I can. Absolutely. Um, for Tom Lynch. But lots of other picks to discuss. So basically the trends this year. Um, so things that are worth more points get scaled more, if that makes sense. So contested ball, uh, hit outs to advantage, intercepts. These players seem to be scoring, uh, not Sicily, but um, these players seem to be scoring really well. So the contested ball winners, we saw Cunnington, Josh B. Kennedy, Sloan had a lot of contested ball. Um, Cripps' dis foot disposal was horrific, um, but otherwise he would have scored a lot more. Did I say Viney? Um, so yeah, all these guys that are um, predominantly contested ball players Hugh Greenwood as well, 50 Dream Team, 116 in Supercoach. So these guys are scoring a lot of points. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. So, yeah. And then, you know, we have Darcy Ford in the forward line. He probably, his job security would be really shaky, I think. So he could be dropped at any point. So not sure, but, you know, if he stays in the team, we get a free Ruckman for 260k. So that's something to consider or ponder on. Um, but yeah, really weird year, interesting year, and just a shame, because, you know, we do all this research, I mean, and, I, and, I, and a few guests, we did all those, we did those podcasts, and um, a lot of build-up, a lot of research for hopefully not nothing, so, anyway, this is the team, um, I hope you enjoyed um, Supercoach while we could, hopefully you enjoyed the video as well, let me know how you went, um, might do a podcast i think it's probably worth doing one a lot to discuss but uh yeah so if i had to do quickly i'll go over my if i had four trades for example out king instert 
out Tom Lynch, in Bailey Smith. I know there's probably better options, but I love Bailey Smith so much. So um, I want him. And then I think Bont has to become Tom Mitchell because Tom Mitchell's going to get another two months rest at least. Tom Mitchell has to come in. I'm not, not having Tom Mitchell that's almost all fully fit. So that's just how it is. And then that's pretty much it. Um, maybe Tom Green has to go, who knows. So uh, that's the team. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, not sure when we'll see you next, but hopefully it's soon. Uh, but yeah, see you soon. Thank you.